Welcome back everybody, High Tech Lab here. Today I have seven of these Nissan Leaf cells and I tried capacity testing these in a pre-assembled kit from BigBattery.com and I really didn't like how they performed. Right now I have all of these cells connected with some bus bars. Now I drug these down to six volts with a heating element inserted into some water with some plumbing fittings and connected that on until they all came down equally. And if I probe across to the balance terminal, I have just about three volts. And if I probe across the other set of cells, I have three volts. So all the cells in this entire pack are equally connected at the same voltage. And this is called a bottom balance. And this is at the lowest state of charge. So then when I connect these batteries in series, they're all gonna drain down to the same three volts. And that'll be the voltage when I stop discharging them. So with all these cells at three volts, I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the screws from these bus bars tying them together. And now with all these bus bars removed, I should be able to probe on one cell only. And I'm still getting three volts on one side and three volts on the other side. And I should be able to go to any cell on this pack and get a consistent three volts. And, and that's accurate. I am getting three volts across the various different cells of this pack. Now I can go ahead and reconfigure this battery pack for a series configuration. And that's done pretty simply just by using left cells and right cells so that you have a negative, positive, negative, positive terminal configuration. But you could simply just get some quarter 20 threaded rod and a couple of wing nuts or even just regular hex nuts and run them through these leaf cells. The holes are plenty big enough to hold this battery pack together. At this point, what you could do is either make out of some aluminum or copper or buy some aluminum bus bars and connect these cells together. I opted to make these because I had some electrical grade aluminum bus bar laying around from another project. So I just cut it inch and three eighths on center for the holes. They're five sixteenths holes and I'm two and three eighths inches overall length on these and they fit perfectly between these cells. The screws would fit into a quarter inch hole but since I have a 5 16 hole, that really allows for some movement. So that way, if this battery pack does move, it doesn't put too much stress on these terminals. And then I can just tighten it down like so. But in this case, I don't have all these bus bars cut for this whole pack. But that's just what you can do at home if you didn't have the option that I'm about to go with. I have the option of this circuit board that would come in the kit if you bought it pre-assembled from BigBattery.com. Now, I'm going to install this board so that it connects all the negative and positive cells together and forms pretty much a 48 volt battery pack. And I'm just gonna put these screws in lightly so that way I can get everything spaced out correctly. And these are slots, so it's actually more forgiving if these batteries aren't exactly on center correctly. And now that I have all the screws in snug, I can go ahead through and tighten them so that it makes a great connection to this circuit board. Now, if you were using the aluminum bus bars making them at home, it would be pretty easy as well and would save you money in the long run. Now, I'm not gonna put in any of these screws on the center post, because I'm gonna manually check these cell voltages with my fluke meter, and I'm actually not gonna run this with a BMS. Once you've made all your connections, you need a way to get the power out. In this case, I have an Anderson connector, but you can really use about anything for your application. And I'm just gonna connect this onto the first cell's negative, followed by the last cell's positive. Now, if I probe this with my Fluke 116, I would expect to see right around 42 volts because I would have three volts times 14, which equals 42. And as you can see, I have 42.11 volts. Now that's off ever so slightly because there may be a 0.001 volt difference between cells, but at this range of the discharge curve, it's really not gonna matter. We're right about where we expect it to be and we have a good bottom balance on this pack. So before I continue any farther, I'm gonna turn on my battery charger and I don't have this connected to the battery. I only have the output connected onto my multimeter. Now I have two small pots in here that I can adjust to change the output voltage. And I wanna bring this down to a safe value so I don't overcharge any of these cells. Now your battery charger or solar charge controller may have a charge voltage setting and you're gonna to wanna to adjust this 
as well as make sure you have something that you can correctly adjust the charge voltage on. So for these Nissan Leaf cells, I'm gonna bring this down to about 55 volts just to get started. And I can do that just by turning counterclockwise on this potentiometer. Now this number isn't critical, but I've got it pretty darn close to 55 volts. Now for this test, I'm gonna use my Fluke 287, and I've wired in a shunt across some Anderson connectors, and I have leaves that I can plug into this meter. Now this is a special multimeter because it'll do data logging, which means I can record exactly how many amp hours go in and out of this battery. I can connect this onto the battery pretty easily with these Anderson connectors and can connect the other end onto my battery charger and we're good to go. We can measure here in the meter. We can just hit the save button and go record. And the record duration currently is at like 13 hours. It doesn't matter. I'm just gonna let this go and this is gonna measure just how much power I put into this battery. Now I will do a capacity test where I do discharge curves. However, in this case, I just wanna see how much power I put in from this bottom balance voltage. At this point, I'm gonna start the recording and turn on the battery charger. And what you're looking at here is the battery charger is putting 35.2 amps through this shunt into these cells. Now with my Fluke 116 here set to DC volts, I can start checking these cells. Now I'm gonna keep monitoring these and as soon as any cell gets to 4.15 volts, I'm gonna stop charging because that's the maximum voltage that these cells can take. At that point, I'll take a measurement of what the battery charger is putting out and that's gonna be the voltage I set it to as the maximum charge voltage and that should bring these batteries as close to full as they are without running a different kind of BMS and simply relying on the bottom balance to keep them working in sync. I'm going to continue monitoring these cells as this charges. It may take a while, but I am running right around 35 amps at right around 50 volts. So it's charging pretty good rate, but we'll just monitor it as we go. So I'm about 15 minutes into the charge. And if you look at my Fluke 287 multimeter, we've dropped down to about 23.2 amps and dropping quick. I probed the overall voltage on this battery and have gotten 54.61 volts and I switch over to my other probes, I can check each one of these cells and see that they're far from their 4.15 volt maximum cutoff. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is readjust the battery charger to put out a few more volts. That way I can bring this battery pack up to a higher voltage. Now, before making any adjustments on the voltage output of your battery charger, I would make absolute sure that none of these cells are at too high of a voltage. And this is gonna be a little bit tedious requiring constant monitoring of this battery pack. At this point, I'm gonna disconnect this charger and clip on my Fluke test leads. And I'm gonna bring this up another volt to 56 volts. In theory, if all these cells were perfectly balanced, I would be able to bring it up to 58.1 volts. But we're gonna go in small increments to make sure that we don't overcharge any of these cells. So with this now set at 56 volts, I can go ahead and reconnect it to the battery and we're back up to 35 amps. Jumping back to checking my battery voltages, I'm still well within the safe range and nowhere near the 4.15 volt cutout. My overall pack voltage at this point is 55.1 volts. So I'll go ahead and let this continue charging, carefully monitoring each cell to make sure none of them are over their maximum rated voltage. So I've gone through and carefully monitored each and every one of these battery cells as they charge. And I have one cell right here that is currently at 4.147 volts, which is extremely close to the 4.15 volt target that I'm after. So I'm gonna call that cell full. Now, since this cell came up in voltage the quickest, that's actually the cell that has the least capacity. Essentially what we did by bottom balancing these is we started them all off at the same position at the bottom and as they increased in capacity, these cells got full to the top of their charge curve the quickest and that's why their voltage went up. We currently have 100 millivolts DC coming off of our shunt and that's power coming through from the battery charger. This is such a small amount of current that this would need to run for 10 hours to put one amp hour of power into this battery pack 
so it's a negligible amount of power in terms of our capacity test. If I probe across the output terminals of this battery, I currently have 57.22 volts, which is actually quite different from the 58.1 volts that I had originally anticipated for getting this battery to. If all these cells were properly imbalanced, that would be how I get my 58.1 terminal voltage on a fully charged battery. But since we bottom balanced it, I need to make sure I don't exceed what this one cell's voltage rating is. At this point, I can actually shut off the battery charger because this battery is full, and I'm gonna disconnect.